Hey everyone, I am here today to do a bit of a tutorial. I would like to talk a little bit about curly and wavy wigs and what to do when they arrive at your door not looking like you expected. This is super common. I see the questions all the time in the Facebook groups. It has happened to me many, many times. As most of you know, I am a curly, wavy wig girl. Those are my preferences. I've got some sitting back there that you can see. And um, so I think that this is a great topic because it's so common and I don't want you to panic if you get a wig that doesn't look quite like you expect it to look out of the box. So let's get right to it. I actually have a wig I just received and it's not looking very good. I'm hopeful that these tricks will help revive the curl on this one because if it doesn't work, that I'm not gonna be able to use this video for an example because I will tell you that it works most of the time, but it does not work all of the time. And so tip number one is you really have to take some time to determine if the wig that you received is worth the effort and or should it be returned, okay? So I purchased this wig from eBay I got a really good deal on it and I can't return it. I don't believe she's defective. I just think she has the worst case of box hair that I've ever seen. And this wig looked great in the pictures. I've been watching it for a long time and I finally decided to buy her. This is Mia by Tressalure and I have wanted Mia for months. I, um, if you watched my video that I recently posted with some, it was a wig chat on, you know, wig buying tips and wig addiction. And, um, and one of my tips was have a trusted wig sister that you can go to, to talk you off the ledge. If you're going to make a purchase that may not be smart. Well, I did that in this case and I didn't listen to my wig sister's advice. I'm sorry, Cynthia, I should have listened to you, but I did it because I've wanted Mia for so long. I've just been so curious about her. I'm wondering how she compares to Mila by John Renault, which didn't work for me. And also how she compares to Brooklyn by Aesthetica, which I have. So anyway, I purchased Mia. I'm going to put her on for you. And I don't think she looks very good. The curls are not great. And so I am going to do what I recommend to my wig sisters to do when you get a wig and the curls aren't what you are hoping they would be. Many, many times this is all you need to do to revive them. Sometimes though, it doesn't work. And so I'm hoping it will in this case but I can't guarantee it. So I'm gonna put her on. So again, this is Mia by Tress Allure and she's kind of a hot mess. Um, I really do think it's a really bad case of box hair. You can see, I mean, this is like all over the place. Um, the curls just are very disorganized. They're not looking very good. She's very flat up on top. I mean, there's just a lot not going well with her right now. So I have a couple of options. If she were bought brand new from a wig store, which she wasn't, I could decide it's not worth the risk and I could return her. There's always, you know, restocking fees and shipping and other things to consider. Uh, so, you know, things I would check would be, is there anything wrong with the cap? Is there fraying? You know, are most of the pictures and videos I've seen, does she look a lot cuter than this? Does she seem to have the curl potential? Sometimes you can't tell if that curl potential is there. So if I would have purchased this particular wig from a wig store, I wouldn't return it because I really think this is gonna be able to be saved just with a few little tips and tricks. Now, something you could try is you could try combing her out. I don't like to comb out curly wigs because I don't want to risk ruining the curl. I usually try to revive the curl before I comb it out. So I'm not gonna do that with this one and I wasn't just combing it out. I was just gently going over the top layer just as demonstration. So in this case, I am going to do so let me back up. I usually have three levels of things that I will do with the curly wig, I'm trying to organize my thoughts so I don't waste your time. Three levels of things that I do with curly or wavy wigs progressively depending on how much help I think it needs. If it's just 
the curls just, I've seen it look curlier and I wanted it to be curlier. Then the first level, if you will, that I would employ is just a spray bottle of water. I would spray it down either on my head and scrunch it and see if that helps, or I would take it off and I might spray it in my shower. Just, you know, really give it a good soaking, but not as much as dunking it in a cold, a sink of water would do. And then I would shake it out upside down and scrunch it. That's the first kind of level that I would try. In this case, because of how much help she needs up here, because of this crazy thing, all of that, I think I need to go to level two. So level two is to take a sink full of lukewarm, cold to lukewarm water, that's your choice. And I usually use coldish water, um, not ice cold and, and not really warm. And I would fill the sink with cold water or, or the water and then I would put the entire wig in the water and you know lift it up and down, up and down, give it a good soak. And I might leave it sitting there for a few minutes, five minutes, something like that. Really making sure it's getting a good soak and all the fibers are getting really, really wet. That's what I'm gonna do with this one. Then I'm gonna take it out of the water and I'm going to squeeze it in a towel. I'm not gonna rub it. I'm just gonna squeeze it in a towel. Then I'm going to vigorously shake it out upside down in the shower like vigor, really shake it. And then I'm going to scrunch it really well and I'm gonna hang it upside down in the shower to dry. And for a little bit here, I'm gonna scrunch it periodically just to make sure that the curls are really kind of, as they're drying, they're really getting scrunched because I wanna see what kind of curl is possible in this one. I think there's quite a good possibility of curl. So that's what I'm going to do. If that doesn't work, the third level is to give it a full wash. Sometimes I'll go straight to that full wash if, if the wig doesn't smell very good or um, if it seems really frizzy or something like that, I might give it a full wash or I might just give it a conditioning soak. This is where experience is going to come into play and I can't teach you that. That's just experience. So I usually try different things depending on what I'm dealing with. I don't think this one's gonna need that because she doesn't smell bad at all. And so I think it's really just reviving the curl. So that's what I do with curly wigs. So I'm going to stop the film now, put the film, the film, you know how old I am. I'm going to uh, pause the video. I'm going to do level two, which is soaking it in a sink of water, shaking it out vigorously. I'll, I might turn this back on to show you that part. And then I'm going to let it dry and then I'm gonna come back and we'll see what we have. And so hopefully that will be enough. But I really, really have been wanting to show you guys how to deal with a wig that just is disappointing out of the box. And it may just be, it just needs a little bit of TLC. Uh, that's And that's it. So hang tight and we'll see what we got. Hey guys, so I'm back. So you've watched the first part of the video, now I'm filming the next part. This is, a, again, it's Mia, and it's uh, she has been soaked in water, she has been shaken out, she has been scrunched many times, and she's been hung upside down to dry. So now she's dry, and this is what we have. So already she looks a ton better. Um, the wonky thing on this side isn't wonky anymore. Um, you know, I figured out how the bangs want to lay. The curl is much more organized and less crazy. The top has got some of its body back instead of the weird flatness that it had from the box. So already there's been improvement just on what I have done. And so is she exactly how I want her? I'm not certain. Uh, this part right here, I'm still trying to figure that out. I think she may need a little bit of steam to give this some lift. But again, sometimes these wigs are just a work in progress. Sometimes you're not going to be able to just shake and go. And that is a part of this journey. And so I'm gonna clip her up a little bit here just to see how I like that. Um, you know, quite frankly, some of what I'm trying to do here in some of the videos is to help you manage your expectations. Because when we have 
inappropriate expectations, we can get really disappointed and have negative feelings and emotions that don't have to be there if we just know what to expect. And that's true of anything in life. But I think with wigs, it's, it's particularly true because there are a lot of situations that uh, require us to have a better understanding of what to expect. And so not all wigs look the same. And you'll get two of the exact same wig and they could look completely different. And so you will watch reviews of wigs that you fall in love with and you will purchase that wig and it will not look like that either just at all or it won't look like that on you. So having a tool belt of tricks and tips and ways to manage really will help you a ton in this journey. And so in the case of Mia here, I think I've gotten her closer to what I'd like her to be with very little effort, but I think there's still a little bit more that needs to be done. And I do think something with this bang to get it up and off my face is probably the next step. Now, to be fair, I took her out of the box today and soaked her today. I've had her on my head when you've seen her. So I haven't worn her. I haven't hung her up. Sometimes just letting a wig sit on a wig stand for a few days is what's needed. Sometimes wearing it around the house and playing with it is what's needed. The heat of your head, um, conforming to your head. Uh, even just clipping her up like that just now, I really like the way the bang is laying better than it did just a couple of seconds ago. So there's a lot you can do without getting drastic. You know, the heat of your hand. You know, I might try just periodically doing a little heat on my hand to try to do something with this bang before I take any steam to her. So there are a lot of things that can be tried and you don't have to feel like all is lost. So if you're in a situation where you can't return a wig or where you really want to see what you can do, um, you know, go for it. And I think that, you know, some of that's just learning. It's an opportunity to learn and you'll get better at this as you go through the journey. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Mia since I've got you here and I will come back with a follow up review of her because this was more about how to make her presentable, even just barely presentable out of the box. And she isn't one that I'm um, pulling out thinking, oh my gosh, she's perfect. She's ready to go. And I have a few of those. She's really not one of them. So let's just quickly talk about Mia. So this color is English Tea HL. And so I think I looked up the color code. I don't remember numbers very well. And of course I'm not remembering it. It was six slash 2730 something. I'm sorry guys. Um, I'm not good at remembering numbers like I just said. So English THL six slash 32 slash 27. And so you can see that this one is really dynamic. It's got some really dynamic highlights and it's got a dark, the six is a dark six, I would say. Um, it's got some auburn running through here, like right in there. And so this is definitely a, a color that has lots of contrast. I think it's really cute, um, but I do kind of like uh, some of these really dynamic colors. So it's, it's kind of fun in that way. Um, so there is a lace front. And you can see that lace front right there. It is on the knotty side. Um, luckily, it's not super dense. So I think I could pull it back. I'm just trying to get it situated here. So I think I could pull it back and, and be comfortable. It's borderline for me to be able to do that, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal. So I think I could do that. She does have curls. You can see those curls. The cameras. I may just mess with my phone too much to ever to ever be terribly successful with keeping the focus on. She also does have a mono part. So you can see that part right there. I would like that part to have a little more contrast 
and be a little bit more scalp-like. So that will probably require um, me using some, um, you know, medical like silicone tape or some foundation or something like that. Uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know. She's a lot of hair. She definitely has permatease. She is full of permatease, all in here, up here. I mean, she's she's definitely a permatease wig, and she has poof. But that said. When I spoke with my friend Cynthia about this one, and she advised me against getting it, uh, one of the things we talked about was how much like John Renault Mila is she? Because both of us have owned Mila, and neither of us could successfully wear Mila. I would say she isn't like Mila. First of all, Mila was so poofy right here, so much hair, and I just never could do anything with that poof. She is a full monofilament, and this one isn't poofy like that. She does have some permatease, but it's not a pillow, poofy pillow of it. The permatease is kind of more poofy on the sides, giving her a little more volume here, which to me is manageable um, in a way that Mila wasn't. Um, she's also longer than Mila by quite a bit. And I think that helps to balance out that, that, uh, the fullness. And so in that case, I kind of like that. Um, you know, I'm going to have a lot of trouble with this bang. I can just tell. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do here with this. Um, so that's going to be my nemesis on this one. And I definitely think just trying to get some lift in here is going to be critical to me being happy with her. Um, the coverage is decent. You can see my bio hair right there. That is so common with most wigs. Uh, the ear tabs, fairly good coverage. I mean, they go right to here. So I would say that this one, it gives me some of the better coverage that I've had. Um, the cap, I have extra cap, but not compared to some wigs. So this one fits me a little bit better in the sense of extra cap. And one thing that I have a lot of trouble with is my measurements are so small from here to here and here to here that I wind up with just like a ton of cap. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. This one, I would say, you know, definitely, I mean, it goes low down on my nape. Yeah, I mean, this cap is fitting me. Like the coverage on this cap is better than many wigs that I wear. Um, I didn't adjust her and she does have Velcro adjusters, which is great. I wish more wig companies would make those Velcro adjusters, to be honest with you. I don't know why more don't do that yet. So I did have to tighten her. So, you know, she's generous. I would say if you are on a full average, if you are tending towards average large, this cap is going to fit you just fine. Um, but she's still comfortable enough for me on the bordering of the petite. Um, I think, you know, I'm excited to see what more I can do with her. Even taking her off and putting her back on, she looks a little different. I think this one's going to be kind of fun to see what to do with it, to see if a little steam will help, to see if some product might help. You know, she might be one that I'll, I'll take a wide tooth comb to a little bit and see what happens with these curls. I don't tend to like to comb out my curly wigs, but I have found a few that I've just, that's made them better. Not as curly, but they didn't look as good as curly. So, you know, that's where that flexibility comes in and being willing to play with your wigs and try some different things. So, <laughs> oh, these bangs. <laughs> so, um... First impressions of Mia, um, I don't hate her. I think I'm gonna have to work with her, but I think she has potential and I think I could learn to like her. So I'm gonna keep playing with her. I'm going to see what I can do and I'm gonna come back and let you guys know how it's going. So if Mia has been on your list, keep watching. But at the end of the day, if you're comfortable with a lot of hair, Mia's quite a bit of hair, if you're comfortable with permatease, Definitely has permatease. Um, if you like curls, if you don't mind bangs that swoop over like this, you might, it might be worth trying her really because I mean she's awfully cute and I know a couple of wig sisters who love Mia. So anyway, that's it. This was a long one, but thanks for watching and if you have questions, let me know. Have a good one.
Okay guys, so here she is in the sink of water, like I said, and I, I do just kind of pick her up and down very gently. And then I, you know, make sure she's really getting a good soak. And then I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna take her out and I'm gonna wrap her in a towel. So that's, this is just the progression. I'll keep on going. Okay, so she is done in the water. I'm trying to film this with two hands. It's not easy, I'm trying to get far enough away. And now I have squeezed the water out of her and now I'm gonna shake her out. This will be interesting to see if I can do both of these. So I am shaking her and splashing myself and the phone very vigorously, as you can see. Really shake, okay? Now, oh, my fingers are stuck in the wefting because I kind of stuck them through. So I really shook her out, and now I am going to just hang her here, and I'm going to scrunch her just like this. Just scrunch her good all over. And now that's it. I'm gonna let her sit there and I'm gonna come back every few minutes for just a little bit, not till she's fully dry, because that's really labor intensive. But just give her a few more good scrunches and I'm gonna I'm gonna let her dry and I'll be back when she's dry.